video I'm going to do a little bit shortened. Uh, I'm going to speed through some of it. Um, this is an install on a Salvis Genuine Body, Mud Boss Body, I should say. And it's one of my neon kits, my true neon kits. Uh, this installation of the neon kits is a little bit different. If you were to follow the instructions uh, for other RC kits that I sell, you could probably get away with the install, but I'm gonna show you the technique that I use that is specific to these neon kits. Uh, this material is actually an automotive wrap material, very high quality cast material. It's the only way you can buy good neon materials. Uh, that is going to change in the future. Uh, one of my main suppliers that I use for my very, very strong adhesive products is about to come out with their own line of neons, but they haven't given me a date. I can't give you a date. So until then, these work fantastic as long as you install them uh, in the way I'm gonna show you in this video. When my uh, preferred manufacturer comes out with the neon stuff, I am gonna switch over. You won't notice it on your end, uh, but the installation uh, will be different and I will update this video. So as long as this video is, is live, follow these instructions. That means you're getting this version of my neon products. Um, <clears throat> much like my other Salvus Mud Boss installation, you gotta prep the body. This one happens to be going to a, a customer who uh, paid for installation on a new Salvus body from me directly. I have a felt tip squeegee. I have a heat gun. You can get away with a blow dryer, that's fine. I'm gonna get some isopropyl alcohol right here. And I have a lint-free cloth. This is from Amazon Basics. Couple extra tools I'm using for this neon product. This is called 3M Tape Primer 94. Now this is in a pint can in bulk. So I'm gonna use this swab applicator. However, if you only think you're going to need something like this product, which is a bond promoter for vinyl uh, stickers or adhesives, you can get a little vial uh, of it, uh, which has a glass canister inside and you kind of break it and it comes out. You can get that on Amazon pretty cheap. I'll put that up in the uh, top corner so you can see that. So the first thing you need to do anytime you're gonna do an install is you need to prep your body. Uh, I am using 99% isopropyl alcohol. You can buy that from Walmart, Walgreens, CVS. It's basically the stuff that's used for first aid applications. And you're gonna go through your panels and you're gonna wipe them down and make sure you get rid of all of the junk that's sitting on your new panels, the dust, things like that. I am going to speed this up because this is self-explanatory and I'm sure you don't wanna sit here watching me do every single panel. Okay, I apologize for the overhead sound in the room. I have to turn the vent fan on when I use the alcohol because it smells so bad. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do first is uh, the inner panel, the deck, and we'll get started on the deck. Now, as you probably know, when you get these, if you order it from me unassembled, but the graphics installed, you will need to bend these down, these tabs. 95% of you have know this and you've done it already, so I don't really need to get into too much detail. Uh, there will be a QR code uh, in the box directing you directly to uh, Salvis, and he will show you how to do that if you don't already know how. Now, these bodies came all the way from Salvis in Canada, and when they were in the box, you know, they jiggle around, and they do have a little bit of a haze to them because of the other pieces rubbing against them. That will not affect the installation. Something that will affect the installation is something you can feel with your fingernail. So if you have a scratch you can feel with your fingernail, you will see that come through the vinyl a little bit. This one is perfectly smooth and we're good to go. Now, unlike my other Salvis kits, which I tell you to do a soapy water apply because I think it's easier, we're gonna do a dry apply on this one. And the reason is, is because this material isn't as insanely aggressive as my other materials that I use. Um, and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna make sure that our hands are clean. My hands are clean. I am going to take 
the deck panel. And I'm going to show you, this actually has some air egress channels in it. You can probably see them just a little bit there. And that is to help us release the air. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the camera down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I've got my sticker adhesive side up. You may notice that I've got a piece of Lexan here. You need a really smooth surface to do this install on, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. My surface on my table here with, with the company logo is more of a textured surface. So I have this uh, 3 8 inch uh, piece of heavy duty Lexan here, which will give me the smooth surface that I need. So what you wanna do is actually install these in an upside down fashion. And what I like to do, let me get this turned just a little bit here. On the inner deck is I like to start with this back edge flush and you can eyeball the tabs, right? On each side, the distance, I should say. And once you get that fixed down right here, you've got a kind of a fixed down point right there. And you notice I'm kind of starting it. And again, I'm, I'm on the back side here. Let's give it a test and see if I got it centered. So let's bring the tab up. You can see I'm pretty good. And we'll bring this tab up. You can see I'm pretty good. So my guess on the center there was pretty good. As long as this edge here is level and plumb with this edge, you're going to be fine up here. You don't need to worry about it. Just worry about that and the rest will work itself out. I'm gonna take my squeegee, again, this is a dry apply and I'm gonna push the air out this way. I'm gonna to work to the right. I'm gonna work out, overlapping places that I've already pushed down and there it goes. I'm gonna lift it up and let's inspect where we're at here. That looks good. I don't see any bubbles. At this point, you can just use your thumb to just pull this up. And the trick here is when you come around this outside bend, you wanna take your thumbs back here before the bend and give it a little bit uh, like a smudge, like a push around the bend. This gives it just a little bit of a stretch around that outside bend. And that'll make for a cleaner installation where this bend doesn't have what we call tunneling in there, where the graphic doesn't quite kiss that bend. And we just go all the way around, come around the other side, just like this. I'm giving it that little bit of a tug. I got a little overlap here, which is normal. I cut these to have a little overlap in spots so that you can trim back. Same deal here. We need to get it just a little smudge stretched around that outside turn so that we don't get any lifting and tunneling. Same here. product goes on very, very nicely with that air egress. It's not too much adhesive. It's just enough. Now, all of this stuff up here gets tucked down and around. So I'm not worried about the alignment right here or right here. The whole thing could shift this way just a touch, but you don't really need to worry about that because it all gets wrapped down around. What you need to worry about is a nice, clean, deck installation and you can see in the glare there are zero bubbles in this right here okay so i'm going to come back i'm going to inspect my work and then i'm going to show you what we do with the adhesion promoter now when this product is pulled around these outside edges because the lexin is a low surface energy it does want to pop up just a little bit in spots doesn't quite have the intensity of the bite. So we have to use the adhesive promoter to break down the lexin just a touch to really get that thing to bite. 
what I'm going to do is move on to more pieces and I'm going to come back and inspect. And if we need the adhesion promoter, we will use it at that time. I'm going to set this piece aside and I'm going to grab the driver's side next and bring it over into camera. Here it is. I'm going to pull the driver's side graphic off the release liner. Again, we're going to lay the sticky side up. And much like the other uh, piece, you see these little notches that I engineered in the graphic here? You're going to align those notches on the bottom where the bend fold is. Just like this. And just lay it down. If you don't like the way it looks, you can turn it over and pull it off and try again, okay? I like how this is overhanging just a little bit here for me so that I can do a little bit of trim work there. It's easier to take away than it is, you know, to give, obviously. So let's get this fixed down. And again, with this specific material, you can still reset it even after you squeegee it down, okay? So I like the way this looks, what I'm going to do, since I have the ability, I'm going to show you how to redo it if you want to redo it. You just take it and you pull it off like this. Again, my hands are clean. If you get any distortion when you pull it off, take your heat, give it a little bit of mild heat, and it will go right back to flat where you started, just like that, okay? I'm gonna try and do a little bit better job this time getting things lined up at the center wheel well. I think I got her there. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix that down right there. And another method you can do, see how it's kinda crooked right here? That's fixed down back there at that point. So I can take this and now I can hinge it and sort of move it into the position that I want. And I need to cheat it just a little bit this way, just like that. And then we can lay it down there. Very nice. So now when you come back and you look at it, you can see I've got a nice little overlap right here. I'm kissing this top edge right there. Back here, I need to cheat it just a little bit back. I just want to get it on that edge there, like that. Okay, I'm going to give it a little bit of warmth so it can relax the vinyl right here because I, I gave it a little bit of a stretch. And then once I do that, I can turn it over and squeegee it out. Did you notice I wanted to squeegee this side because typically that's how it's done and my brain just seems to want to work that way. I guess they call that muscle memory. So we're gonna work this down and we get to this. And again, this is an outside edge. We wanna take it like this. That looks fantastic. And just like that. Now what I'm gonna do here, cause I know I've done numerous installations with this neon and this bottom edge gives me a little trouble with adhesion. So what I wanna do is I wanna pop the cap off this. Now in your in in instance, you're probably gonna have the little vial and you will crack it. And there's a little felt tip on the front and the fluid will come to the felt tip and you will do it that way. This stuff is very stinky, by the way. It will get into your nostrils quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking this soaked swab and I'm just gonna go like this. It's clear and it evaporates very quickly. And all you do is just run it right down that Lexan, just like that. Now you definitely want to make sure that it's dry and you're going to do that thing I taught you with your thumb. It's the stretch and pull. You want to give it 30 seconds or so to dry, maybe even hit it with your blow dryer. Even though it looks like it's evaporated, a little bit can be left. And that increases the bond exponentially. I mean, it's really strong. 
Probably not going to get that off at that point. Trick is, again, make sure you give it that little stretch around the corner there, okay? Here is our panel. Looking good. I'm gonna set this aside. I am grabbing the passenger side. And of course I need the graphic. Okay, same process. Let's line up the wheel. There it goes. I had to bump this in just a little bit so it kissed there. And because of that, you can see there's a couple little ripples up here. And I'll show you, see them there? Right there. I'll show you how to navigate that. Just give it a little bit of warmth on the back. You don't need much. And we will very softly push that down. And you can see, because it's a good cast material, which cast is, Cadillac of vinyls. It is has the most stretch and the least amount of memory. It is able to just settle down without any problems for us, okay? So now we move on to, again, this upper spot here, and we will just go like this. And that looks fantastic. Again, on these lower... Uh, turns, takes a lot of abuse from um, the ground when you're racing. On the Neon products, I like to do this. And we do this one. Okay. I'll take my heat gun and I'll just give it a little warmth here. Try and evaporate it out. I got a little overzealous on the back side there. There's a little bit left, so I'm just gonna wipe that off with my finger. You will notice that it does discolor the uh, Lexan just a touch. That's how you know it's working, okay? So here we are, start in the middle. I'm giving it that smudge push around that edge and instant bond major instant bond right there. This 3M product works amazing. Um, you know, once you get done with this project, if you find other spots where you had to give it a little stretch around an outside corner like this, very easy to take the product and give it a little dab and you'll be amazed at the bond that you get from just a little bit of that product, okay? So here we are. I'm gonna put this one aside. I am going to grab this roof. Now I know from experience, right here around this corner and back here is where I'm gonna need the adhesion promoter. So we'll go through this together. I'm gonna to pull it off the release liner. Okay. I'm going to take this, and again, the notches that I cut out, find the corners, and then lay it down from there. I'll show you. See the notch right there above my finger? It goes in your corner, notch in the corner. Make sure you don't contaminate these little guys here that are hanging off. You're going to squeegee this down like so. And we're gonna take our adhesion promoter and we're gonna start back here. If you want, you can kind of peel this back a little bit. Now that everything's aligned, you can peel that back and it'll just lay right back down. And I'm just gonna go like that. I'm gonna take my heat gun, do a quick evaporate. Okay, we'll work this back down See how I'm just hanging off the edge right there? And now we can just do our pullover just like that. Now remember, when you pull this over and it makes contact, it's an instant bond and I do not recommend trying to relift it back up. 
where the uh, primer is. My apologies for being off frame. I'm trying to look at this and there we go. Now, this piece here, I know always gives me a problem right here and right here. So again, if you want, you can even go like this. Okay. And again, we'll dry it off and we will smooth it out. And once it hits that primer, you will notice the difference between that bond and other bonds on the machine. On this one, I'm gonna just take it and manually stretch it out a little bit. And that's gonna go down like that and we'll trim the excess off. We are now on to the other side. Okay, dry it off. There you go. This comes down around the edge here. And we are good. I will come back and trim excess off after a bit. Looking mighty fine. We are all ready to the rear wing, uh, wing. And in this piece, on this inside turn right here, I'm gonna put some. And you can do that right away on this piece. I'm gonna pull the piece I need off. And I like to start here. Just like this. You wanna hold this up a little bit so you don't get it down in that back corner quite yet. You wanna work it down like this and you wanna tuck it into that bottom, that inside corner like this before this top edge makes contact. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is, is if you bridge this inside edge with the vinyl and then try to push it down it may pop back up. So you wanna work it down into that crevice first, then let, the, let this top fall where it may. I am going to take my adhesion promoter and I'm going to put it on that edge. I'm gonna dry it. And I'm gonna take my graphic, line it up here and like the other ones, you can just smooth it out and we'll smudge it up and around that edge. Like so. Okay. I got one more piece for this back here. We won't need any uh, adhesion promoter for this because this outside edge is square in the middle of the graphic and there's a lot more uh, graphic real estate there for it to bite onto. So I'm gonna start on this top edge. I'm gonna line up my artwork like this. Go. Just using my thumb in these small areas to squeegee the air out manually. I'm gonna give it a nice little stretch or ruski there work away from that outside bevel there. 
and we have a great alignment there. And we are done with that. The only thing we've got left now is the nose, which is super easy. I do like to put a little bit of adhesion promoter on this inside edge here. I'm gonna warm it up so it evaporates. There we go. I'm gonna pull the piece I need, which is happens to be the final piece off of the release liner. Like so. And in typical fashion, I'm going to adhere it like this from the back. I'm centering it. I have a little bit of an over bleed of the vinyl on all edges, and that's by design, so you can trim it back. Here is an outside edge. Again, smudge that up like that. And I'm just gonna continue to work this to the top. And like the wing, I'm gonna warm this up a little bit because this bend happens to be a much tighter. Like the wing, I'm gonna hold it back from touching until I get that inside bend down. Then you can finalize it by going across the top like that, okay? Let me uh, move. Okay. I've got a nice, sharp X-Acto, and what I like to do is get it in an edge like this, and it's super easy. You can get, once you get it started, you can just follow the edge of the Lexan, just like that, and it's done. Well, that edge is done, but any other edges you need to do, it's gonna be the same process. Now, I know there are some guys that, you know, they'll come down like this, and you can do it this way too. Just use it as a guide, but that only works on certain flat, long edges. You know, when you start to get into some of these more complex things, uh, I like to get in here like this and follow this tough Lexan just like that. And you end up with a very nice, um, clean edge just like that. I'm going to uh, trim the balance of this and I'm going to speed it up and then we will regroup at the end. pieces now. You can see everything looks good. Specting from the back and the front, zero air bubbles. I'm going to go through piece one by one, show you what I do when I do an install for a client. Uh, this piece right is actually the other piece, but we'll do this one too. This area right here could use some primer. So I'm just going to dab that Gonna let it dry. Put it in the black there and you can see there's just a little bit left right there. Once it's dry, you can bring your vinyl up and over and your bond is much better. That should no longer give me an issue right there. I'm gonna set that aside. You can see on this one, same thing right here. So I'm going to grab my primer. Get it in the black here so you can kind of see. Quickly it disappears. OK. 
Okay. There we go. And we're just going to give it a smudge over there. Just like that. Set that aside. We'll inspect this. This looks darn good. Again, I had already glued this one or primered this one up. The rear wing, again, that was primered. That looks good. And the center pan, we will need to take some special attention to. I'm going to do this whole bottom tab here. And for this, I'm going to use my heat gun again. So we'll take the primer and we'll go over this edge, holding the graphic back. And we will speed dry it with the heat gun. And then simply use our thumb to go over just like that. Do the other side. This side didn't give me as much of an issue. I'm not exactly sure why, but I'm still going to do it. So I'm going to use my knife to, to help me lift that up and we'll work our way back here and take our primer. Now, when you do this, being that you know the areas that need the primer, if you want to put that on instead of, you know, setting it aside for a while like I did, that's fine. Um, I only did it this way because I wanted to come back and show you how it lifts off a little bit after the install and you think things are good because I don't want you guys uh, doing your install and then running right to a race and you get to the race and you realize, ah, I should have put the primer down. Now I am going to come back and trim this piece. I didn't do it quite yet. Uh, I did the other pieces off camera, but here we are. Everything looks fantastic. One final step I do like to take on all of my kits on RC cars, especially since we're talking about the Salvis body installs, I like to go over it with a little bit of heat when I'm all done. Check my edges, make sure they're down. Uh, I do let them sit uh, maybe an hour um, and come back and check my edges because that, within an hour, you can see edges that don't wanna sit the way you thought they were sitting when you first did the install. So I like to take my heat gun and especially on the edges that have given me issue and I needed the primer, I like to just go over it. And what the heat does is, is it sort of excites the uh, adhesive and gets it to migrate a little bit and it gets down into the lexin or the substrate and you get a much better bond. Uh, another option, and I've done this too, depending on where you live and the climate you're in, you can set them out in the sun. And the sun in the summer does a fantastic job of cooking these things. And you can really pretty much get away without even having to use a heat gun. Again, I'm just heat treating it. I'm getting the uh, adhesive to migrate and soften, flatten out. I don't see any issues with that. We'll move on. A couple spots I like to really focus on. Let me see if I can get it in the glare is like right here, right here and on these tabs. Now, a lot of this is held down like the tab, you know, it'll be held down by the top of the body, but the heat is really important as your final step to get everything really bonded well. I always think I get a piece of dirt trapped right here when I do these and it's actually the cutout for the 51. <laughs> 
every time it gets me. I think, oh, I got to pull that up and get that piece of dirt out of there, but it's the cutout for the 51. Okay, looks fantastic. Do the other side. Paying special attention, if you notice, to the corners, edges. And finally, the pan deck. Start with the front, get it nice and cooked up. Sometimes it cools before you can get your hands on it. So you got to reheat it a little bit. If you like uh, the neon kits, uh, feel free to follow the link in the description and you can get your hands on them. I have uh, neon green, pink, yellow, and orange. Thank you so much for watching.